In today's video, we are going to go over an example problem for Hooke's Law. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If I look at my analytics, I see that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe to my channel. Support my channel step by step. Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Of course, you should click the notifications bell, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, I have made a lot of other teaching and learning materials that you can find at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below, whether you're looking for some other additional online activities, practice problems, notes, examples, you can find all of that for lots of other topics in physics from my Teachers Pay Teachers website, link in the description below. And of course, I've made a bunch of other videos, which you can link in the upper right hand corner of this video for simple harmonic motion, springs, and pendulums. Now we're going to go through this video in three parts. In the first part, we're going to re review Hooke's Law. In the second part, we're going to graphically determine the spring constant for a spring. And in the third part, we're going to determine the mass of some unknown masses. Now for part one, review Hooke's Law. This is Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law simply says that Fs is equal to minus k times x. Fs is the force exerted on the spring, that force is measured in newtons, abbreviation capital N. Then K is the spring constant, it is measured in newtons per meter, and then X is the change in the length, whether it's the compression or the extension of the spring, and that is measured in meters. Okay, I want to point out quickly that we have this negative sign here, this minus sign, that does not mean that the value on this side of the equation, the force on this side of the equation is less than zero. This just means that this force is in the opposite direction of this force, Newton's third law, you have equal and opposite reactions. Okay, if you pull on a spring, then the spring pulls back in the opposite direction. Okay, we can say Hooke's Law in a couple of words here. We can just say that it is the force needed to extend or compress a spring by some distance is directly proportional to that distance. Now, what does that mean? It says the force and the distance are directly proportional. That simply means that if you apply more force, you're going to get a greater change in distance or a greater change in length. If you apply less force, then you're going to get a lower change in length or compression, depending on whether you're extending or compressing the spring. All right? That is Hooke's Law. Now, what about this spring constant? It's important that we know what the spring constant is. Here's our Hooke's Law equation. We're going to solve that, leave off the minus sign, solve that for k, and we get that the spring constant is equal to the force divided by the change in the length. And the force is measured in newtons, the change in length is measured in meters, and therefore the units for the spring constant are newtons per meter. Newtons of force per meter of change in length. And you could have a spring, for example, that has a spring constant of 3.25 newtons per meter, that means it would take 3.25 newtons to change the length of that spring one meter. If you apply less force, you get less change, but the force and the distance are proportional to each other. Now, every spring has its own spring constant. Some springs are stiffer and some springs are softer. This spring is a relatively soft spring. It takes very little force to change the length of the spring. This spring has a low spring constant. This spring, in comparison, is a much stiffer spring. It takes a lot of force to change the length of this spring. This spring has a much higher spring constant. Okay, softer spring, lower spring constant. Stiffer spring, greater spring constant. The spring constant, once again, is measured in newtons per meter. And it's a measure of the stiffness of the spring. The higher the spring constant, the stiffer the spring. The lower the spring constant, the softer the spring. You can also think of it as the amount of force that is needed to stretch or compress a spring one meter. You can see that right here in the units. It's newtons of force per meter of change in length. Okay, so that's our introduction, and then that is our uh, explanation for the spring constant. Now we can go on and determine the spring constant for a spring. Okay, now as we said in part two, we're now going to determine the spring constant for a spring. And in this part of the video, we're going to be using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Simulations. They are out of the University of Colorado at Boulder. There's their website. The simulation that we're there, we're going to be using in this part of the video is called Masses and Springs Basics. And we are going to be using the lab window. I want to point out that everything that we're talking about in this video applies to whether the spring is either a 
vertical spring and the mass is hanging off the spring, or whether it's a horizontal spring and you're pushing and pulling the spring to extend or compress that spring. Now this is the simulation that we're going to be using, and this simulation has a bunch of great stuff on it. You see we have a mass here, we can change the mass of the mass. If I can hang the mass on the spring, and you can see if I change the mass and make this mass greater, we get greater extension. Less mass, less extension. I can change the stiffness of the spring. For this is 1 through 10, we're going to be using 1, 2, 3, 4. Stop that. And we can see what the unstretched length was and what the resting position or the stretched length was. And we also have these unknown masses that we're going to be using at the end. You could change gravity. You can show some other information. There's a timer to figure out the period. But we are simply going to be measuring the change in the length. So I take my handy dandy ruler here. I set it up like that. And I'm going to measure the change in the length for five different masses. And we're going to use that information to make a graph. And then we're going to determine the spring constant from that graph. So we're going to start with 50 grams, just like this. And I'm going to write down that 50 grams gives me 8 centimeters of change in length. You can see this is a ruler. This is centimeters. It's 10, 5, and that's just about 8 centimeters for the change in the length. Now I'm going to move up to 110 grams. And I'm going to stop that. And you can see that I get just about 18 centimeters for the change in the length. And then I'm going to go up to 170, just picking kind of random values here. And then I get 28 centimeters for the change in the length. And then we'll go up to 220. And you can see now I get about 31, no, 36 centimeters for the change in the length. And then we can go all the way up to 300 grams. And you can see that there I get just about 49 centimeters for the change in the length. So I have five data points now that I can use on my graph. Now before we go to the graph, these are the masses that we want to try and determine the mass for the unknown masses. So I'm going to hang these on here and write this down. I'm calling this green. Green gives me 10 centimeters. The blue one gives me, I'm going to say, just about 19.5 centimeters. And the red one, I'm going to put on there like that. And you can see that gives me just about 29 centimeters for the change in the length. So I have all that information now written down. And now I can go to my graph, back to my presentation, and then I can use the graph to determine the spring constant. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide. Here is the data table that we're going to make. We have this information that we put uh, from what we got from the simulation. We had 50 grams, 8 centimeters, 110, 18, 170, 28 grams, 28 centimeters, 220 grams, 36 centimeters, and 300 grams gave us 49 centimeters for the change in the length. Now, when we make the graph for Hooke's Law, we want to determine the Hooke's Law constant, the spring constant, the spring constant measured in newtons per meter. Therefore, we have to change our masses into newtons and our lengths in centimeters into lengths in meters, and then we can make our graph. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to con first convert all of these grams into kilograms. To do that, I take each one of these and divide them by 1,000 because there's 1,000 grams in each kilogram. So if I take 50, then I get 0 .0, 0 0.05. 110 is 0 0.110 and on and on like that. So that we get 300 grams is 0.3 kilograms. Now, how do we convert kilograms into newtons of force? All right, in order to do that, we're going to use Newton's second law in the form of F equals M times G, G being the acceleration due to gravity. Those masses are hanging on that spring, and they're being pulled down by the Earth's gravity. So we multiply by 9.81, and what we're going to do is we're going to take each mass in kilograms, all of these, each of these, and simply multiply each value by 9,81, 9.81 meters per second squared, and then we will get the force, and that force will be in newtons. So we just do that for each one, and those are the forces that correspond to those masses. Now, we have one point or one half of each of the points that we're going to graph. We have our force in newtons, and now we need our change in length in meters. We have it in centimeters. There's 100 centimeters in each meter. Simply divide each one of those by 100, and you get the change in the length for each of those in meters. Remember, once again, 8 is not 0 0.8. 8 is 0 0.08 meters. All right. 
Now we have the data that we're going to graph. We have the force in newtons. We have the length in meters. This is one half of our points, and this is the other half. We're going to graph those on our graph, and I wrote down here our change in lengths for the unknown masses. Okay, here is our graph. Here's the data we're going to graph once again. Force in newton, change in length in meters. I put the force on the y-axis. I put the change in the length on the x-axis. I'm simply going to graph all of these. This is 0.5 newton, so that's going to be, excuse me, 0.9. I'm going to 0.49 almost 0.5 and 0.08 so that's going to be somewhere right around there I put that and I can put the remaining four points until I have all five points on my graph just like that now you can see that's a linear relationship it's a linear relationship because the force and the distance are directly proportional to each other and that's a linear relationship so I'm going to draw my best fit average line that's what I'm calling my best fit line you might draw yours a little differently, but simply the graph, the line is not down here. The line is not up here. It has to go through, doesn't have to go through any of the data points, but most likely it's going to go through maybe one or two of them. And you can see that line represent those data points. Now I'm going to use that line to calculate the spring constant because the slope of that line is actually the spring constant. We are going to take our Hooke's law equation solve it for k. We have a force and a distance, the force divided by the distance. So you can see I have my forces over here, my distance is over here. I'm simply going to choose a point on the line, any point on the line where I want to calculate the spring constant. And I'm going to choose this point right here because I can see at that point the force is 2 newtons, the change in length is 0 0.35 meters. I plug those values into my equation and I get that it's 2 newton divided by 0 0.35 meters, and I get that the spring constant for that spring is 5.7 newtons per meter. It would take 5.7 newtons of force to change the length of that spring 1 meter. I could have chosen any point on the line. I chose this point because it is right there on the graph, and I can easily see that that's 2 newtons and 0 0.35 meters for the change in the length. Okay, now we have our spring constant, and then in the next part of the video, part three, we're going to determine the mass of those three unknown masses. Okay, here we are at part three, and in part three we are going to determine the mass of those three unknown masses, and to do that we are going to use our graph. This is the graph that we drew in the previous slide. There's our spring constant, and here is the change in the length for each of those unknown masses. Okay, the green one gave us 10 centimeters, the blue one gave us 19.5, and the red one gave us 29 centimeters for the change in the length. So what we're going to do now is from each of those changes in length, we are going to read off of our graph the amount of force that would produce that change in length. For example, this is 10 centimeters. Now down here we have the change in the length, but the change in the length is in meters. So for each of these first, we have to convert them into meters. So 10 centimeters would be 0 0.10 meters. And we can look at our graph. We have right here 0 0.1 meter. 0 0.1 meter would give us just about, if we go up to the line and over to the Newtons, we would see that that amount of change in length would require 0 0.60 Newtons. Okay, that force would give us that change in length. Well, we knew the change in the length, so now we have to go back in the other direction. The change in length would need this much force. We can do the same thing for the blue one. We had 19.5 centimeters, which is 0 0.195 meters. That's just about 2, which is right here. So I'm going to, or 0.2, excuse me. I'm going to go up to the line and over to the force, and you can see that that is just about 1.2 newtons. And then the last one we're going to do is for the red one, obviously 29 centimeters, 0 0.29 meters. Go up and then go over. And then we see that that is just about 1.7 newtons. Okay, so we knew, the, we measured the length. And now we figured out the force that corresponds to each of those lengths. And now we can go back to our data table. And we can see that we're going to now calculate 
the mass in kilograms and then the mass in grams because we know from Newton's second law that there's a relationship between those. Newton's second law being F equals mg, g being the acceleration to gravity, which is still 9.81, but we want to solve for the mass. We're not solving for the force this time. We're solving for the mass. The mass would be the force divided by the acceleration due to gravity. The force for the first one, the green one, is 0.6 newtons, 9.81. Divide those two, divide 0.6 by 9.81, and you get that that is 0.061 kilograms, corresponds to 61 grams. Multiply it by 1,000, and then you can see the green mass had a mass of 61 grams. We can just do this exact same thing for the blue. You see we took the force, 1.2, divided by the acceleration to gravity, 0.122 kilograms, which is 122 grams. And then for the red one, you can see that we have 173 grams. Okay, so there you go. That is how you can use the graph and the Hooke's Law constant uh, to determine the mass of those unknown masses. All right, there you go. That was all three parts. We went over a review of Hooke's Law and the spring constant. We collected some data from the simulation and determined the spring constant for the spring, and then we used that graph and that data and that spring constant to determine the mass of those unknown masses. All right, there you go. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things now. Subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, click the notifications bell. Give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. And also, don't forget, sharing is caring. Remember, 90% of the people who watch don't subscribe. Please subscribe support my channel. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.